what if I told you that right now, as you sit here in this very auditorium, particles from the very edges of the universe are passing through your bodies at the rate of hundreds per minute. These are cosmic rays. They come from the very edge of what we can see in the universe. This is a picture of Pupis A, which is a collapsed supernova, which is possibly emitted at some of the particles in this very room. Like a lot of people, I first learned about cosmic rays when I was in school um, at about age 12, and the teacher told me what was going on, and I learned about it, and I didn't really think any more of it uh, up until about three years ago when one of my colleagues actually came to me and told me about a TED talk uh, that was given by Jill Tata of SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, back in 2009. And this was a TED wish. Jill's wish was that all Earthlings could be given the means to participate in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And this wish inspired Tom Bales from Euclid Laboratories to start the Ergo Project, which is a student project where students build, operate, and analyze cosmic ray information, which they collect with little modules uh, distributed around schools. And this inspired me and some of my friends to think about what we could do to make monitoring cosmic rays more accessible to ordinary people. Since the start of the 20th century, uh, the scientific process has been dominated by professionals, the classic image of men in white coats, people who get up in the morning and are paid to do research, and that's how they earn their living. Indeed, the bulk of the scientific knowledge that the human race has today has come from this kind of process. But now, at the beginning of the 21st century, there's a new movement in science, that of the citizen scientist. Ordinary people who are enabled and enthused to participate in the scientific process. Normally, what enables them is a network, either people they know or, increasingly, an informational network, the internet. What if we could take this principle and apply it to cosmic rays? So now, a little bit of scientific background. The Earth is being continuously bombarded by cosmic rays. They hit the outer atmosphere, but fortunately for us, the atmosphere acts as, as a protective umbrella. You can think of it almost like a rain shower uh, with cosmic rain. Very high energy particles impact the atmosphere, but then, like an umbrella and a big drop of rain, uh, they splash and they break into lots of smaller droplets with lower energy. And it's those droplets uh, that are passing through us right now as we sit here. What if we could make a detector that was so simple that an ordinary citizen could build one? You could put it in your home, you could put it in your office, you could encourage your friends to do the same, and altogether we could build a giant array of internet-connected boxes capable of detecting cosmic rays. If we can do this, then whenever a cosmic ray strikes the Earth, we can detect it we can say which box received a piece of the cosmic ray, the individual fragments. These fragments can then be reassembled. If we share all the data over the internet, we can see exactly where they all landed and piece together the original incoming high-energy cosmic ray. So this illustrates what we could do if we all work together to build a giant cosmic ray telescope. But I've been talking for probably about five minutes now, have any of you noticed the hundreds upon hundreds of cosmic rays flying through your bodies? I, I, I don't think so, because you can't feel them, you can't see them, you can't smell them, you can't taste them. In order to do this, we need to make the invisible visible. Fortunately, science has already solved this problem for us uh, with a technology called scintillator crystals. These have been used by high-energy physics experiments since people have been doing high-energy physics to detect cosmic rays. You can see here the latest generation, which is a plastic scintillator. Effectively, it's a plastic rod that has a special chemical ingredient in it that reacts. When a cosmic ray passes through the rod, it produces light. The stripe down the middle of the scintillator is an optical fiber, very similar to the kind of thing that brings high-speed broadband into your homes. And we can use this fiber to capture that light and to focus it and concentrate it so that we can read it out using a sensor very similar to one you have in the digital camera of your telephone. 
Here's a picture of what's going on inside a scintillator when it gets hit by a cosmic ray. All the little yellow points you can see are photons, little pieces of light, which we can group together using the fiber and focus to a single point where we can put a detector and convert it into an electrical signal. So me and my friends in the Cosmic Pi project have come up with a recipe where everyone can build a cosmic ray detector. And it's quite a simple one, so I'm going to take you through it now. Uh, like all recipes, it's important to start with a good base. So we've based our project on the Raspberry Pi low-cost computing platform. Uh, since it was released uh, two or three years ago, they've produced more than five million. So there's a large user base for this kind of technology. On top of your base, you add an electronics module and a GPS receiver. The GPS receiver is very important because it enables us to locate our detector in space so we can plot it on the map. And when we detect particles, we can timestamp them very precisely so we know exactly when they arrived at our detector to within 500 nanoseconds or so. And the icing on the cake is the scintillator that I just showed you. So now you have a complete cosmic pie. All you need to do is add cosmic rays. Fortunately, we get those for free from outer space. So the rays impact the scintillator crystal and make photons. These photons we can then convert using our electronics into digital information within the Raspberry Pi, which we can transmit over the internet to a network of other people who are doing the same thing, so that we can all see the cosmic rays that each detector is seeing. You might be thinking, where does this fit in the context of professional science? How is this little box going to uh, contribute? Here you can see large-scale professional science cosmic ray projects arranged in order of how much they weigh. The largest of them is the Pierre Auger Observatory in South America. It consists of multiple modules, and each module weighs 1,200 kilograms. So that's probably more than most people's houses. Uh, it's a great detector for big-scale science, but in terms of making it accessible to ordinary citizens, it's probably a bit too big. We can pick a slightly smaller one, uh, Pamela, which is attached to a satellite that orbits the Earth. Even this weighs 470 kilograms, which is about half the size of an average family car. So it's a bit too big to have in your home. The Cosmic Pi, the prototypes we've built so far, weigh less than 500 grams, and it's nice and compact. So in fact, you can put it in your pocket. Uh, this is in fact our prototype. It's very important that a citizen science detector be small and portable so that you can put it in your home and it doesn't take up your entire living room. Another way to look at the scale of scientific research is in terms of money. The most expensive and the most advanced cosmic ray detector yet constructed is the AMS, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which was assembled down here on Earth, loaded into the space shuttle, and is currently attached to the International Space Station orbiting above us. This project cost $2 billion to complete, which is a lot of money. If we go back down to the Pamela project, very small scale, even this project cost $32 million. Apart from billionaires who we were talking about earlier, not a lot of us can write a check for $32 million. So it's important that the Cosmic Pi is affordable and our prototype unit can be assembled for less than $500. So we think that'll be a big factor. Everyone's heard of distant galaxies, places like Andromeda. Here, you can see the max J0.717 plus 3445 galactic cluster. The name just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Each one of the points of light on this picture is a, a galaxy as big, if not bigger, than the Milky Way. One of the most exciting points about cosmic rays is that those with the very highest energies are still of unknown origin, and modern science cannot tell us where they come from. And this is the kind of thing that inspires me, and hopefully will inspire you, to get interested in cosmic rays as a topic. But cosmic rays also have relevance closer to home, uh, in a more down-to-earth sense. I mentioned that there's a a number of cosmic rays, hundreds, passing through all of our bodies every minute. But in fact, the number isn't constant. It goes up and it goes down. And again, modern science cannot explain these fluctuations. Having a network like Cosmic Pi will enable citizens to participate in gathering data that can be of interest to citizens and also to professional scientists to help us understand 
what is causing this. And perhaps even more relevant to our daily lives now is the issue of climate change. Uh, cosmic rays are a key factor in the formation of clouds, which are part of the climate model. Gaining a better understanding of the formation of clouds enables climate scientists to better understand the phenomenon of global warming. These are areas in which Cosmic Pi can collect data that can be useful. So I hope that I've given you a little insight and inspired you that you too could be a citizen scientist and collect cosmic rays. All of the designs that we're developing are licensed under an open license, the CERN Open Hardware License, and they're available for download now on our website at cosmicpi.org. So if you want to get out your soldering iron, you can start building your prototype today. I realize that not a lot of people potentially want to start building things with a soldering iron. So very soon, we'll be launching a campaign on Kickstarter where you can buy a fully assembled unit to put in your house. Thank you very much.